Thank you all for listening and watching my videos, please subscribe and like my channel Master Coolits. Hoping that you will not skip my ads, it's a big help for me by not skipping it, thank you so much. Dragon Shadow. The Rise. What? What kind of monstrous strength is this? It's, it's inhuman. The man Alora injured was grimacing in pain. His groans of agony echoed through the chamber. Even the formidable David Sullivan and Caleb Pierce struggled to maintain their composure in the face of such unexpected might. All eyes wide with awe turned to Alora. The onlookers, a diverse group of cultivators from various sects, exchanged bewildered glances, their previous assessments of the woman before them shattering like fragile glass. Holy, where did all that power come from? Has she been sandbagging this whole time? To think we never saw this coming. Impressive, truly impressive. And yet I, I can't shake the feeling we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. What other secrets might she be hiding? Elora Xavier, once an unremarkable figure before joining the stars of 10 palaces, had maintained such a low profile that many had overlooked her potential. But now her power rivaled that of Caleb and David, two of the most renowned cultivators. Listen up and listen well before any of you even think about messing with Zane. You'd better ask yourselves if you can last 10 seconds against me. And trust me, that's being generous. As Elora spoke, a surge of purple energy exploded from her body. It was as if a dam had burst, releasing a flood of raw, unrestrained power. Within seconds, a 10 meter radius around her was transformed. The once smooth stone floor was now covered in uneven purple crystals, each one pulsing with barely contained energy. While the crowd's attention was captivated by Alora's display, another transformation was taking place. Zane, having consumed over 20 celestial life pills, felt his body surging with newfound energy. It was as if every cell in his being was awakening, charged with a power he had never experienced before. His cultivation, once at the peak of the seventh stage of the intermediate level, now skyrocketed past the eighth stage and continued to climb, pushing boundaries he never knew existed. Zane's eyes were closed in deep concentration, his face a mask of intense focus, his body pulsated with power, each beat sending waves of energy rippling through the air around him. Those nearest to him could feel the pressure of his aura, an invisible force that threatened to push them back. As he delved deeper into his inner world, he sensed something extraordinary, a faint whisper of celestial's will within the pills. It was a force so potent, so overwhelmingly powerful, that it would cause an ordinary person to explode within seconds. Yet, thanks to the form of the Elder Wyvern, Zane not only survived this onslaught of power, but thrived in it. Zane Martell, you spineless coward. You think hiding behind a woman makes you tough? Come out and face me if you've got the guts. Or are you too scared to fight your own battles? Kevin Strong's body crackled with thunder, arcs of lightning dancing across his skin. His eyes, wide with fury, were fixed on Zane's motionless form. The scarcity of celestial life pills among the Seven Kingdoms Alliance had left him empty-handed. This fact that gnawed at him, fueling his rage. Zane's actions, consuming all the pills without sharing, had pushed Kevin to the brink of his sanity. As Kevin issued his challenge, something shifted in Zane's demeanor. Waves of energy began to roll off his body, invisible to the eye but felt by all present. His clothes fluttered wildly, as if caught in a tempest that affected him alone. The air around him shimmered with heat, distorting the very space he occupied. Slowly, deliberately, Zane opened his eyes. Those who met his gaze gasped involuntarily, for there was an otherworldly quality to his stare. It was as if he had achieved a state of enlightenment beyond mortal comprehension. Zane took a single step forward, and the impact reverberated through the entire hall. The ground beneath his feet cracked, spiderweb fissures spreading outward. The walls shook, causing dust and small fragments of stone to rain down from above. 
You bastard! This time, I'll kill you and devour every last bit of you. I refuse to believe all those celestial life pills have been fully absorbed. Your flesh, your blood. I'll take it all and claim that power for myself. Kevin's control snapped, and with a primal scream, he released all the thunder and lightning stored within his body. The transformation was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. His human form seemed to melt away, replaced by a being of pure electrical energy. Bolts of lightning arced from his body, scorching the ground and walls wherever they touched. His eyes, now glowing in electric blue, were filled with madness and desperation. From his fingertips, now elongated into claws, piercing bolts of lightning emanated, their light so bright it was painful to look at directly. Your pills? I don't remember that the pills had your name on them. Since when did you have a claim on power you couldn't even grasp? Zane's words, spoken softly yet heard clearly over the din of Kevin's thunder. His eyes gleamed with a dangerous light. Yet despite the imminent threat, Zane made no move to attack or defend. He stood perfectly still, as if waiting for something only he could perceive. Zane, look out! Don't just stand there! As Kevin's lightning closed in on Zane, time seemed to slow. But as the first bolt struck his body, something unexpected happened. Instead of causing harm, the electrical energy was absorbed directly into Zane's form disappearing as if it had struck a black hole. The power of thunder, visible as streaks of light, flowed through Zane's body. It traveled along his eight extraordinary meridians and blood vessels, pathways of mystic energy that glowed beneath his skin. Finally, this torrent of power reached his energy center, the core of a cultivator's strength. There, something truly extraordinary occurred. The energy was absorbed by the domain of the dark sky thunder a unique technique that Zane had mastered. The Dark Sky Thunder domain within Zane had the form of a sapling during the initial days of training. But as he absorbed the energy from the attacks, that sapling underwent a dramatic metamorphosis into a mature tree. Its branches had thickened considerably, growing and spreading with the attacks. But most striking of all were its leaves. Once a mix of colors, they had now turned almost entirely golden each one shimmering with internal light as they constantly absorb Kevin's thunder. This change, oh, it, it's not just from absorbing Kevin's power. Those hundred celestial life pills I consumed in the dragon prison are finally kicking in. The synergy between the pills and my unique constitution. It's creating something entirely new, something unprecedented. No! You're stealing my power! This isn't possible. It can't be. Kevin screamed as he felt his strength rapidly diminishing. The sight was horrifying to behold. His once imposing form, wreathed in lightning, began to shrink and flicker. The glow in his eyes dimmed, and the arcs of electricity dancing across his skin grew weaker and more erratic. It was as if he was a candle being snuffed out, his very essence draining away before everyone's eyes. His cultivation, once at the proud peak of the ninth stage of the intermediate level, plummeted with terrifying speed. It dropped through the eighth stage, then the seventh, not stopping until it finally bottomed out at the fifth stage. A chill ran down his spine as he saw Zane's sinister smirk. It was the look of a predator about to strike, and Kevin knew with a bone-deep certainty that he had made a terrible mistake. His face, once contorted with rage, now showed nothing but pure, unadulterated fear. Wait! No! Don't! I take it back! Spare me, Zane! I was wrong! I admit it! Spare you? All right. Zane clenched his fist and in that instant, released the full might of the dark sky thunder. The sight was both beautiful and terrifying. The lighting, once a dark silver, had been transformed by the power of the celestial life pills. It now streaked forth as a brilliant fusion of gold and silver, a divine lightning that seemed to defy the very laws of nature. 
The gold and silver lightning engulfed Kevin like a ravenous python swallowing its prey. For a brief moment, his silhouette was visible within the blinding light, his mouth open in a silent scream. Then, in the blink of an eye, he was gone. Where Kevin once stood, there was nothing but a scorch mark on the ground and a lingering smell of ozone. Kevin Strong, one of the proudest and most powerful members of the Stars of Ten Palaces, had been reduced to ashes in an instant. The sudden and brutal demise of Kevin left everyone present in a state of shock. The hall moments ago filled with the sounds of battle was now eerily quiet. Even powerful cultivators like David and Caleb couldn't hide their astonishment. Their faces, usually masks of calm confidence, now showed a mix of awe and barely concealed fear. Anyone else feeling lucky? Step right up. I'm more than happy to grant a few more wishes today. The atmosphere in the hall changed in an instant. The previously aggressive cultivators, who had been eager to challenge Zane, now couldn't even meet his gaze. Some found sudden interest in the cracks on the floor, while others pretended to be engrossed in conversation with their neighbors. The message was clear. No one wanted to be the next Kevin Strong. Hmph, what a waste of time. Let's move, people. We've got better things to do than stand around gawking. With a dark expression that didn't quite hide his unease, David turned on his heel. He began to lead the Great Eastern Palm Group out of the hall, heading deeper into the complex. His steps were hurried, almost eager to put distance between himself and the scene of Zane's devastating display of power. Zane, are you... How are you feeling after all that? Relax, Elora. I'm good. Better than good, actually. Now that this circus is over, we should get a move on. Can't let them hog all the goodies, right? There's bound to be more where that came from. <laughs> Dull, dumb. Now you're talking. No point dawdling here. Let's roll and see what other surprises this place has in store. As the others followed Caleb, their excited chatter filling the air. However, two figures remained rooted to the spot. Rebecca and Kosov stood still, their faces a mask of disbelief as they stared at the place where Zane had stood. Rebecca bit her red lips, her brow furrowed in concentration. Her eyes, filled with a mix of admiration and frustration, followed Zane's retreating form. Zane Martell, who are you really? How did you get so insanely strong without any of us noticing? It's like you've become a completely different person overnight. Rebecca, level with me here. Is this seriously the same Zane you almost took out back at the Spirit Fusion sex branch? I mean, come on. Kosov couldn't hide his astonishment. He could sense, with growing unease, that the Zane standing before them now likely surpassed him in strength, a notion that would have seemed absurd not long ago. Trust me, I wish I could say otherwise, but yeah, it's him all right. As for how he got this powerful, your guess is as good as mine. You think, could it be the Heaven Fate? Heaven Fate? What's that supposed to be? Word on the street is that the real treasure of the Celestial Life Pill is the Celestial's will it packs. Pop one or two and you won't see Jack, but down a few dozen at once. And if you've got the Heaven Fate, you're golden. Without it, the Celestial itself will spit you out faster than you can blink. But hold up, Zane only consumed over 20 or so, right? That can't be it. Little did they know, Zane's true pill count far exceeded their wildest guesses, surpassing a hundred celestial life pills consumed during his time in the Dragon Prison. Unable to unravel the mystery, Rebecca and Kosov reluctantly followed the group deeper into the mysterious citadel. The sheer scale of the structure defied imagination, its corridors stretching endlessly before them like a labyrinth of stone and ancient power. Days blended into weeks as Zane and his companions traversed the mysterious citadel. Their journey was not without rewards. They encountered and defeated a group of formidable fire-devouring beasts, their bodies radiating heat and danger.
With skillful use of their sky shadow talismans, our heroes transform these beasts into pure energy, a testament to their growing strength and ingenuity. Another arsenal was discovered, its contents gleaming with promise. But like before, the genuine energy artifacts proved immovable, resisting all attempts to claim them. Only Zane with his secret weapon, the verdant frogs managed to derive any benefit from this tantalizing but frustrating find. Unseen by the others, the verdant frogs feasted on the arsenal's energy, their color darkening to an inky black, a sign of their impending regression to seed form. This secret progress filled Zane with a mix of anticipation and caution, knowing the power he was nurturing in secret. A month and a half into their exploration, an uneasy peace settled between the Seven Kingdoms Alliance and the Great Eastern Palm within the palace walls. This truce, born of necessity and the unknown dangers lurking in mysterious citadel, stood in stark contrast to the world outside. Beyond these ancient walls, fierce battles raged between the two factions, each encounter ending only when one side lay dead or gravely injured. Finally, after countless detours and dead ends, Zane and his group arrived at a place of legend, the Soulful Cave. The air thrummed with anticipation as they approached, sensing they were on the cusp of something truly extraordinary. As they stepped into the vast hall of Soulful Cave, an awe-inspiring sight greeted them. Dozens of cave-like entrances dotted the walls from floor to ceiling, each emitting a unique spiritual light and pulsing with elemental energy. The scene was a kaleidoscope of power, each cave promising untold secrets and potential. This is it, folks. We finally found Soulful Cave. I'm new here. What's the big deal about this place? Zane, my friend, Soulful Cave is the beating heart of Mysterious Citadel. The elemental essence of the world is at its strongest here. It's the perfect spot to really dig deep into the power of nature. Ah, got it. So this is why everyone's been chomping at the bit to get into the Mysterious Citadel. Zane's eyes scanned the hall, taking in the various caves. Some glowed dimly, their light a soft beacon in the vastness. Others shone with dazzling spirit light, their energy palpable even from a distance. A few were sealed off by mysterious formation barriers, clear signs of prior occupation that sent a ripple of urgency through the group. Looks like David and his crew beat us to the punch. Damn it, they've snagged all the prime spots. No time to waste. We need to claim our places now before all the good ones are gone. The members of the Seven Kingdoms Alliance sprang into action, each racing to secure a suitable cave for their cultivation. The hall became a flurry of activity, cultivators leaping and flying to reach the most promising caves. Let's meet again in four months, Zane. I need to work on mastering my new skills. Hold on, Alora. Have I... Have I done something wrong? You seem off. No, you haven't done anything wrong, but I... I'm starting to think maybe we're just not meant to be together. Elora turned to face Zane, her eyes now a striking purple, a testament to her awakened purple pole spiritual body. Her presence radiated an otherworldly aura, as captivating and distant as the stars themselves. The transformation was stark, leaving Zane momentarily speechless. It's over, Zane. What? But why? What's going on here? Are you keeping something from me? Is this because of Kai Rivers and Madame Tina? Are they threatening you? Zane's words struck a chord, causing Alora to visibly flinch. Her eyes misted over, betraying the turmoil beneath her cool exterior. For a moment, the mask of indifference slipped, revealing a flash of pain and conflict. It has nothing to do with them. Let go of me, Zane. With a graceful leap, Elora soared towards a cave emitting a purple light, leaving Zane rooted to the spot, his mind a whirlwind of confusion and hurt. The distance between them grew both physically and emotionally as Elora disappeared into the depths of her chosen cave. We're over. Just like that? This doesn't add up. So Q wouldn't just fall out of love with me. There's got to be more to this story. What did Kai and Madame Tina do to her when I wasn't around? Kai Rivers, I swear, 
If you've hurt her... Zane's face contorted with a mix of anger and determination. He yearned to confront Kai, to uncover the truth behind Alora's sudden change. But the vastness of Mysterious Citadel made such a confrontation impossible for now. He was left with questions burning in his mind and a resolve hardening in his heart. I need answers. But first, I need power. The kind of power that'll make even Kai think twice about crossing me. With a powerful leap, he ascended to a cave emitting a soft blue light. Beside its entrance, the character of Wynn was etched into the stone, promising challenges and opportunities aligned with his elemental affinity. I've reached major completion with wind power, but I can feel it. There's a higher level waiting to be unlocked. If I'm going to get to the bottom of what's going on with Elora, Kai Rivers, and Madame Tina, I'll need every ounce of strength I can muster. <laughs> As Zane stepped into the cave, a thin layer of magical light shimmered into existence at the entrance, sealing him inside. But what awaited him defied all expectations, challenging everything he thought he knew about the nature of this place. The soulful cave was no mere cavern. Zane found himself in a vast, boundless level, a microcosm of elemental power. Above him stretched an endless expanse of blue, as vast and deep as the sea itself. The air thrummed with potential, each breath filling him with the essence of wind. What in the world? This isn't just some cave, it's an entire dimension. For an entire day and night, Zane flew through the sky level. His senses stretched to their limits as he searched in vain for any sign of land or sea. There was only the endless blue expanse, punctuated by raging winds and tempests that seemed to have a will of their own. Violent gales, hurricanes, and tornadoes tore through the air, their fury unmatched by anything Zane had encountered before. Wind blades as sharp and numerous as ocean waves sliced through the atmosphere with deadly precision, testing his reflexes and control at every turn. Despite Zane's considerable strength and his advancement to the eighth stage of the intermediate level, he found himself a mere speck in the face of these elemental forces. His body struggled against the overwhelming currents, barely maintaining stability as he was buffeted from all sides. Now this is what I call a training ground. Soulful Cave really lives up to its reputation. Without hesitation, Zane plunged into the heart of a raging hurricane. His mastery over wind and his wind serpent step were put to the ultimate test as he pitted himself against the raw fury of nature. Four months had passed in the blink of an eye, the entirety of which Zane spent immersed in the otherworldly level of Soulful Cave. During this time, his mastery over the power of wind had reached unprecedented heights, teetering on the very threshold of major completion. On this day, Zane emerged from the cave, his spirits high and his power palpable. Oh man, it's been a while since I've been out. Wonder what I've missed. Zane stretched, his muscles rippling with newfound strength. As he gazed down from the cave entrance, he noticed a flurry of activity below. Many cultivators had already emerged from their respective caves, some even departing from the mysterious citadel and the Sky Shadow secret level altogether. Amidst the sea of faces, Zane's eyes locked onto a familiar figure, Elora. The sight of her instantly flooded his mind with memories of their conversation four months ago, reigniting his confusion and concern. What in the world happened while I was gone? Elora, I need answers. With a graceful leap, Zane descended from the cave, landing smoothly before Elora. Hey, Elora, I'm back. Did you miss me? Caught off guard, Elora's beautiful eyes flickered with a range of emotions. For a brief moment, they shone with spiritual light, but quickly turned cold and dim. No, have you given any thought to what I told you before? What do you mean? Zane's brow furrowed. Of course, he knew exactly what she was referring to, but he was reluctant to face the harsh reality of her words. I want to end our relationship. Her tone was ruthless, as if all their shared experiences and memories were nothing more than fleeting clouds illusory and not worth a second thought. No way! I can't accept this. Did Kai and Madame Tina do something to you? Are they forcing you to leave me? 
Talk to me, Alora. If it's really them, I swear I won't let them get away with it. Please, tell me what happened. Alora struggled to free herself from Zane's grip, her face a mask of indifference. It has nothing to do with them. Our relationship is over. That's all there is to it. With those cold words, she walked away, stopping beside a man in red armor. None other than Kai Rivers himself. That bastard. How dare he show his face here, after everything he's done. What kind of deal have you struck with Alora, Kai? Spit it out. A terrifying wave of air erupted from Zane's body, surging towards Kai like a raging flood. Kai's face, which had been sporting a sinister smile, suddenly changed. Caution replaced his earlier cockiness. What's it to you? Didn't you hear her? She told you to get lost. If I were you, I wouldn't be so pathetic, clinging on like some annoying side piece. Zane refused to believe that Elora would betray him. They'd weathered too many storms together. No matter how cold she acted now, he couldn't accept it. His trust in her was absolute and unshakable. Elora, please, tell me what's going on. I can only help if I know the truth. But Elora remained silent turning her back to Zane. As she did, her cheeks flushed and tears welled up in her eyes, a detail Zane failed to notice. She bit her lip hard, as if enduring unspeakable pain, yet still unwilling to confide in him. Karma's a bitch, isn't it, Zane? You want to play the pathetic ex? Be my guest. Elora, let's go. He then grabbed Elora's arm, attempting to pull her away. This proved to be the final straw for Zane. He definitely knows what's going on. If Alora won't tell me, I'll beat it out of Kai. You bastard! Get your filthy hands off her! Zane's voice boomed like the roar of a dragon, releasing a pressure so intense it felt like it could shatter heaven and earth. The onlookers, including Eric and Caleb, stared at Zane with wide eyes, shocked by the display of power. I'll do you the courtesy of amputating those filthy hands for you. Zane's fingers came together, unleashing a devastating sword energy that streaked towards Kai like a bolt of lightning. Save me! If I die, you'll regret it! Just as the sword energy was about to slice through Kai Rivers' arm, Alora intervened. Purple crystals formed around Alora's hand, only to shatter like glass against Zane's attack. Realizing the danger to Alora, Zane quickly dissipated his sword energy. Alora, why are you protecting him? I have to. Ha! Zane, you don't have the guts to hurt your precious Alora, do you? If you want me, you'll have to go through her first. What's going on here? Did Alora cheat on Zane with Kai Rivers? No way. If I were her, I'd definitely choose Zane. He's got talent, he can make pills, his future's way brighter than Kai Rivers' is. Maybe it's some kind of love triangle. How juicy! The harsh words of the onlookers pushed Zane to his breaking point. Shut your mouths if you value your lives. An unprecedented wave of killing intent washed over the crowd, making them feel as if death itself was breathing down their necks. The spectators fell silent, watching with bated breath as the situation unfolded. Despite everything, Zane's faith in Alora remained unshaken. However, her insistence on protecting Kai Rivers had pushed him to take drastic action. All right, I respect your choice, Alora. But know this, between me and Kai, one of us dies today. Make your choice. As Zane spoke, he slowly advanced, his body radiating an all-encompassing, terrifying pressure. Enough! Why can't you understand? Didn't you hear me? I am telling you to stop! 